What's been happening at AFL House since the Braden Maynard incident? Well, it was a dramatic day at AFL headquarters on Friday, Sam. In fact, the drama began probably on Thursday night. I was at the AFL function. There were a lot of conversations going on. There was Gillan McLaughlin there, Andrew Dillon there, the new head of football, Laura Kane there. By Friday morning, the view of the match review officer, Michael Christian, was that there was no... There was going to be no charge against Braden May. No case to answer. No case to answer, I should say. There would be no suspension, no weeks, and that was going to be the end of it. Laura Kane disagreed, Andrew Dillon disagreed, and Gillan McLaughlin disagreed. There's even a suggestion that... I'm not sure whether the Commission got involved, but Michael Christian was adamant that there was no charge to be laid. The AFL, those bosses, insisted on sending this one straight to the tribunal and more, ha well not really havoc, but more disputes occurred when the AFL insisted on grading the charge. Now, the last time Michael Christian was overruled in this manner. It happened when Steve Hocking was running footy. It involved um, Hunter Clark and I think David Mackay from the Adelaide Football Club. That went through to the tribunal ungraded and I actually think Hunter Clark got off on that occasion. Anyway, at this point, my understanding is that the match review officer said that he would have to consider his future at the AFL if this um, suggestion, if this recommendation went through to the tribunal. Wow. He, the, whatever happened after that, whether a bluff was called, but Michael Christian's still there and the recommendation still went through to the tribunal. I also understand that initially Michael Christian's name was going to be on the press release and that it was Michael Christian himself who insisted on an AFL boss's name being on the press release. So here it is, Cara. And that, of course, was Laura Kane. Cara, can I ask you what you said there, uh, that they disagreed... Did they disagree in terms of that uh, that he should be getting weeks or they disagree that it isn't taken to the tribunal? Look, uh, the view on the, the pro-Maynard side mm. is that the AFL are doing this largely because of the optics, mm. because concussion is a big talking point and Angus Brayshaw, let's face it, he wasn't just concussed. He was knocked mm. unconscious in what I believe was a very poor act and he was unconscious for two minutes. Now, the AFL know that had nothing happened here, it would have been a disaster PR-wise for them. I also think there was a view from some that he should have got weeks, but they certainly thought it was serious enough to go to the tribunal and the charge on the gradings is a three-week suspension. So the view now is that he's either going to get three weeks mm. or no weeks and we all think Collingwood is going to appeal, whatever happens. But what does, it mean for, what does it mean for Michael Christian and his future? Well, I, Are you I, saying he threatened to quit if it was sent to the tribunal? He said he, was gonna, he, was, he would consider his future if um, it went through and if it went through in that, with that wording. And he insisted on Laura Kane, who it must be said has had a pretty hot start as head of footy. I mean, she dealt with the Adelaide, the Ben Keys goal or non-goal situation. She led that. She ended up getting the job pretty soon after that officially. And now she's, there, well, she's been very strong here, but she's certainly had the strong support of Andrew Dillon and Gillan McLaughlin. So can, can I ask you then, yep. can I ask you a question? I, th so, I think it makes it difficult yeah. for Michael Christian. Yeah, so if you're seeing at home and you're a colleague would support or just a neutral supporter like the independence of it all and if Michael Christian's view versus he shouldn't get anything to no no we've got to send this up is about optics or do you think it's it is at the end of the day it's the Laura Kane decision or it's a Gillan McLaughlin decision more than it's ever going to be yeah, a Michael it's, deci was it, decision. I, I think it's one of the great furfies of footy of the last it hasn't been independent the last 20 years, years. Yeah. Yeah. Since, it, it Steve Hocking been, changed everything mm. no I, I, even before him I think Cara Mark Evans and Simon Lethley like that they it always was more blatant under Hocking probably you're probably right but it's entirely reasonable for Michael Christian to think one thing and entirely reasonable for Laura Kane and Andrew Dillon to come over the top and say, OK, thank you for your view, but we need to send this to the tribunal. What's the so point the of having him then? What's the point of having him? No, no, he's, a, he's allowed to offer his opinion and he's done a really good job for a really long time. That's why he was on the panel and yes, now he's doing it. But they take, he, they take his opinion, years. though, on some things and not on others. That's OK, it's their league. They run it. Like, let's, let's, why don't they just do it? So, so why don't so so they just say, yeah. well, it's three weeks? What, what, why have a tribunal? Why have anything? Well, no, because we get to, we get to have the case heard with evidence. I think, again, it's entirely reasonable. Like, one, one party who is really angry hmm. that Michael Christian held this view is the Melbourne Football Club. And before we go into what's gone on behind the scenes here, let's have a listen to the Melbourne coach after the game. Look, I guess that'll be sorted out during the week, but 
Um, you know, we've got a pretty shattered player in there. Yeah, look, you can only go by the facts. He jumped off the ground and knocked a guy out. So I guess time will tell. So all bets are off here. In the past, Simon Goodwin probably would have received a si please explain for those comments. In these circumstances, the AFL have let it go through to the keeper. We know now that Braden Maynard went round to the house of Angus Brayshaw with a bottle of wine for the player, with a bunch of flowers for his girlfriend. The reason he was let into the house, I think, is because Max Gorn and Christian Petrecker happened to be there and Max Gorn let him in. It was pretty tense, I understand. I'm not sure the flowers actually made it to a vase cane. I think Braden Maynard also contacted Angus Brayshaw's mother, Deb. Don't think that conversation went very well at all. Melbourne are absolutely filthy about this. They're disgusted at some of the excuses that are coming out of Collingwood's mouths and some of the commentated mouths that think um, the, the, the player should get off. And they are filthy, partly because they lost one of their best players very early in the game. They keep saying, this is not a concussion. This was a two-minute unconsciousness, loss of consciousness. Now, there's every... Even if Melbourne win this week, I very much doubt he'll play in the preliminary final. He's even in doubt for the grand final. And we heard from his brother tonight as well. Should we have a listen to what Hamish Brayshaw had to say, Sam? Yeah, there's times where things happen that... Um you know, almost you can't control. You know, it's a 360 degree game. There's guys coming from everywhere. And, um, you know, sometimes it's unfortunate that things like that happen. You know, I think it was it was a footy play. It wasn't, there was no malicious in it. Like, Bruz is a fair player. Um, and it's just unfortunate how it ended. I spoke to him earlier on today. He's, uh, he's having some scans on his brain. So from the same doctor that looked, at, looked after him a few years ago. Health comes number one and he's got a life to live after football. So I think that'll be something that he'll assess over the off season and whether or not his uh, body can keep going, that'll be, uh, that'll, time will tell. You've been pretty strong, Cornsy, over the weekend on this. You take the, a different view to Caro. Yeah, I'm not sure what Melbourne think are excuses about what uh, Braden Maynard could have done differently. We all understand it's horrific. We're all feeling for the player. No, it's commentators and, uh, suggesting that Braden should have been off already having a, having a concussion test for okay, a previous Okay, but in terms incident. of what he could have done there, if you play that in real time without going over old ground, I don't think you can do anything different. Now, you are taught as a five-year-old when you start playing the game to protect yourself. If he leaves himself open, he leaves his groin region open and the prospect that they both get injured significantly and the tensions between the clubs I'm interested in you're you're alluding to the flowers not being well received and, and for, I, I for, thought it was for, disappointing what, how could it be if you're going to go around to a player's house in a private gesture I think it's a real pity it leaked out but he didn't he didn't say that it came well, out and this, it? this happens all well the, I don't know they've both got the same manager maybe the manager leaked it happens all the time though oh, we, we he, see he's a great bloke he went round and gave him well, red but wine he's and damned flowers. if he, you do if you're damned if yeah. you don't what if he doesn't go around there then you're saying he's shown no remorse I think what that would have read I think that would have read the room a little bit no, better I don't, well I don't think so I because then you be, I, I can't stand up to you on this one about what he should have done but in the aftermath I'm interested in the aftermath he jumped in the air how could you possibly be critical it sounds, like you've, sorry. Sorry. it sounds like you've taken Melbourne's view. It sounds like you've taken Melbourne's I took it view. on the night. I was at the game. When I saw it, I thought he'll get but three what weeks. Did, what if, and when I saw the replay... But I what if Maynard it. didn't do anything? I reckon you'd be into him that Maynard didn't attempt to call, he didn't attempt to go and visit, and he'd get smashed that way as well. So the, he can't really no, win No, I here. wouldn't. That's absolute bunkum. I'm saying it because I don't mind what he did, mm. but I thought it was a bit odd that people released it as a bit of a... But then who's... Oily... That's not any of Collingwood's fault. If there was a lot of Melbourne people there... Maybe. I don't know who... I don't know Brayshaw's who... Brayshaw's family was there. If the flowers weren't well received, you know how these things get out. But Jordan Ngoi texting Elijah Hewitt that when that incident was there, that became public. These things always become public. Uh, I just... When I heard... I think I heard Tom Morris reporting it about the red wine. I think... I, I don't know who reported it first. I thought, oh, come on. Not, I'm not bagging Tom, yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. come on. He's this, got a lot of Melbourne contacts, Tom. This is, this is career, this mm. is Tom, career ending. Got, Tom's got a lot of contacts everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Well, you think it's, do you think it's career ending? I'm, I'm posing the question, as Hamish Brayshaw just did in that grab. Yeah. Look, this is a shocking incident. Mm, we all understand that. And, and I just think that even if it wasn't deliberate, under the rules now, it doesn't have yeah. to be deliberate. Yeah, I'm but, shattered too, Carol. I coached... Um, Angus through his junior football at Haylebury College and, and I know he wears that helmet for his mother because of the fears and mm. the concerns that she's had for him as a player and all those sorts of things. So it's absolutely shattering, devastating. I can see how emotional they are as a club because they're seeing the hurt yeah. that he is under, but I haven't let that get to me either for what I believe 
happened in the incident. Now, I've seen some others, and Kane showed one here with Tom Lynch over the weekend, where you're just caught in a position where the accident can happen, and you do have to brace, which Tom did in that situation. And then Matthew, you're sure, surely yeah, not and then, that. And then this one, where you just do things happen on a footy field where, yes, I'm going to protect myself and brace, and we knock, I knock out my own teammates. So. I understand what Maynard did in this situation. And the ultimate question that we've been taught now and conditioned for a while, for years, Kane, by the AFL, the bottom line question is, was the action reasonable or unreasonable in the circumstances? Mm. And when you're running flat out like that in the air, I think it is more than reasonable to do that. And, and my, my question for the AFL is, if the head is sacrosanct, what are we going to do with a high mark? Because it is an absolute free-for-all where you can drive your knee into the back of someone's head or their that, jaw or their cheek in the guise of going for a mark. But that's OK. Yeah, that, that's a free-for-all. So Callum Ward knocked out a fair time ago. Look at that knee. That's the most dangerous thing you can do on a football field. And that's OK. The head, don't worry about the head there. Don't worry about the concussion there. You can do that because you can drive your knee as long as you're going for we a mark. We have to move on, but they're red herrings you're throwing the, at us. I'm, I'm not sorry, at all. I'm you, they're just, not comparable. The, the, the risk of head injury is there when a player steps out on the field and the risk of an accident yeah, has just been shown by there. But you, you would never say anything about that. I'm just saying how far do you want to cut to the fabric of the game? No, no, I, I think that that's... I think that's a totally fair question. This, that's the line that the AFL are approaching. Mm. Where do we draw it? Which is what I'm asking. Where, yeah. And then if you want to get rid of the high mark, which is one of the best things but they, in that game... But they won't do that. Kane, you're being they, they, they won't do that. But so that's, that's, ten, that's, ten, that's, that's ridiculous. No, it's not at all. Because no, that's ten, ten, year, ten years ago, you would have not even questioned what Maynard did. This is how far we've got in this space. Now, I'm questioning how far we will get to. That is the most dangerous thing you can still do on a football field, but and no one says it. It was reckless, it. and that's massive. Lordy, to the action, to, to the action. I'll oh, break this fight up on the footy field. Uh, do you think Melbourne have learnt enough in their times over finals? Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see, uh, Sam, because uh, they had their issues in the mid-season. I thought they couldn't win it. Yep. Then they made some changes with uh, obviously Melsham and Petrarca and these things, and I, I was around full on with Melbourne, but then you see the, the bad Melbourne again on the weekend where they did everything right. Superstars, they got the best A graders in the comp and they let themselves down again on the biggest stage of all. Yeah, and Max Gorn and the head of footy, Alan Richardson, spoke to a little bit of that across the weekend. Um, just a bit of a sour taste of the numbers that are on the whiteboard after the game. It's a, it's a very almost Melbourne-type loss. Um, we've had plus 30 inside 50s. We've won the contest, won expected score, um, but we still can't get over the line. Looking back on 22, we just felt that we were on um, just rolling out what we'd always done. We weren't quite as open-minded as we needed to be, and that was in our review. We identified that, and so I think I think we've been in a really good... And I'm talking about everyone now, but it's led by Goody. Uh, it's been in a really good headspace to just look at what is best for us. So, Alan Richardson, just to clear that up, was pre-game. Max Gorn's post-game. So, on Max Gorn, he said it's a Melbourne-type loss, and he talks about projected scores and that... They can go one way or the other, head in the sand and say we played well, we just didn't finish, or they can really go the other way, and I'd go the other way to say we cannot do what we did again the other night and just bomb that ball in and go down the same track because you can't win a premiership that way, Kane. So I think that they really have to be critical of how And they'll look at selection. They've yeah. got some, some issues. Van Royen is out. The form of Tom McDonald I'm interested in, and I, I wonder whether Grundy can give you more than this effort that we saw from McDonald, who looked like a VFL player, like a player that hadn't played a long time, and it was too much to ask for him to do that. So can Grundy give you this or more, but also the flexibility that you get with putting Grundy in the ruck for however long you want and have a look at Max Gorn forward because his aerial presence was dominant on the night and I know that was from the ruck but four contested marks I think playing Grundy gives you a little bit more flexibility I know others disagree with that it's not going to be the difference in the game but I think they'll look better with McDonald out and, and Grundy in yeah, uh, Max Gorn, by the way, some vicious rumours in footy in the last couple of days that he fractured his foot. My understanding that he's, he broke his toe a little while ago and has been dealing with that, but he's OK. He gets it jabbed. It's, it's not really an issue. So Max Gorn is fine and will play against Carlton. It sounds like Daniel Turner is going to be the man to be moved forward as well. So I'm not sure what that means for Brodie Grundy. Um, but yeah, They won't even consider him now after the former McDonald the other night. Two-time All-Australian. You're thinking about the name of Turner, who's what, has played two games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but well, Grundy's not a forward, so I, no, they're trying, they're trying to make... You can reshuffle, though, can't you? Not, not in the final series. I, I, no. think, I, think the, I think it's over, and I think they've known that for, for uh, some time. Lee Matthews raised this with me. He said, I, I think Max Gorn kicks too much. So I went and watched the game of Max Gorn back, and this is what he's talking about. 
can he handle that ball to Salem or spin around and, and go to Sparrow rather than do this? So Ruckman who think they need to kick all the time are an issue. That's a handball. Give it to your runners. I'm trying to think, how can Melbourne generate another two goals a game, three goals a game? And that is not by just Max Gorn ripping it out of the ruck and throwing it on his boot. And I think it's something that, again, make the hard calls. Give that to Oliver or Viney, who can feed and run and not do this. So that's something that the champion Ruckman can uh, take his game on. good pick up from Lee. It is a good pick up and good vision. I've got to see a lot of faith in Melbourne. I think they're going to have a big part to play in this final series. They're incredibly well led. And I love this from Jake Lever. So look at the score there. That's three-quarter time. They're down by a fair margin. I thought his leadership, the positivity of this group, they know. They've all summer, they've practised contest and defence. That's going to keep you in games in finals. And this game against Carlton, the both sides are really strong in that area. But don't be surprised if they're not there on grand final day against Collingwood. What about their opponents, the Blues? They went in pretty tall on the weekend. It worked. Will they do the same, do you think? I think they will because it's Melbourne. Uh, and so this is uh, 190 plus players versus the side they're about to play against. But what I thought was they were big, they were combative, and it was really good for them for a half. Mm. And then I thought they lacked run and really were running on the spot at the end. So they'll have to weigh that up. I think it suits Melbourne, but if they get to, say, a Collingwood or a Brisbane, they may have to go a bit smaller. And there's been some talk about extending Michael Voss's contract as coach. He's got one more year to go. I don't see the need to do that now. Uh, this is the, the quotes from the President, Luke Sayers. He's delivered critical support, but also said Voss would be cool with entering the 2024 season out of contract. And that's the way that they should approach it. Make the call on this at the halfway mark next year, despite how good he has been. Exceeded all the expectations of where we thought the Blues would be. But no one's coming for Michael Voss now, but, and you can make him wait until yeah. the halfway point of next year. I think you've been ahead of your time on this. You said this years ago about um, Luke Beveridge yeah. and, and other coaches before it. It's, it's very rare that coaches get poached, unless you've been in the game for a long time, probably premiership coaches, so why do I do it now is, it, is a fair point. But what about the tenure of John Longmire? Caro? The serving coach in the AFL, isn't he? I yep. don't think Sydney have got any intention of making a move in the short term. This is what Tom Harley said when he was interviewed before the game. Certainly not, not in a formal sense. That hasn't. Um, that there's, there's nothing formal about that. I think all organisations would look to build really deep capability within every role, whether that's in the coaching side, high performance, executive. We've got Dean in our coaching panel, and um, he's fully invested in the group in the city. Um, but absolutely nothing formal lined up. The question, of course, was about Dean Cox and a succession plan. These are the stats. Look, he's been unbelievable, John Longmire. We know how consistent he's been. Um, a premiership. So many grand final losses, of course. Really Four finals in 11 out of 13 seasons, Gary. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just extraordinary what that club has done. I don't see why there'd be any question mark on John Longmire. They had, you know, I know they made a grand final last year. They probably shouldn't have made a grand final last year. They overperformed. They had a terrible run of injuries earlier this year. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see what he does with life after Buddy. I don't know about what you, th mm. you think. But, I but da at... Damien Hardwick said he was burnt out after so much time at one club. Like, do, do well, you Damien think that Hardwick that... and John Longmire are two very different people. Yeah, but do you think the clubs will look people. at that situation now and be more oh, I'd aware? Look at, I'd look at it in the next year or two with Yeah, John I'm, I'm, not saying, yeah. I'm not saying give him another five to years. To devise a but... succession plan? Yeah, I, or just to say, do we get a fresh voice in, a fresh okay. idea? Like what's Adam Kingsley done has been phenomenal for the GWS Giants this year. I know you don't always get the right replacement. The GWS hadn't performed to the tune of But they Sydney's still made done. a lot of... Um, they did, yeah. Yep, grand final did. and... and did the Swans get their planning wrong against the Blues? Uh, yeah, I thought they were too safe. I was really critical of the first half performance from Sydney. They, they, they put themselves five goals down, in my opinion, by how safe they were. And this is just one clip of a number I could have shown. Look, 15% play on from Marks in the first half. And then when the game was lost, they went 37. Mm. And they scored 18 to 50 points. So they didn't even challenge Carlton, in my opinion, in the first half. So... I was critical of what Sydney did uh, in that first half. They didn't really give them a true chance. It's time in September for the final spotlight. And Lordy, you're first. Yeah, mm. And no Jack Martin and no Harry Mackay. So what do they do to look after Kerno with uh, Lever and May who are going to be at him? And this, this man, De Koning, they lost their way against Sydney for a period where McCartan was marking everything and, and, and the defenders because he was on the bench. So I think he has to play large minutes. I don't like Pittnet as a forward, so I think he has to play along with Silvani 
alongside Kerno. Uh, so pressure's on him to not just be down there, Kane, but kick a couple of goals. Yeah, it's a good point. And for the yeah. second week in a row, Cozzy Pickett, I'm putting the final spotlight on. He doesn't understand how good he can be. Uh, there, there isn't a player in the game that can go with this guy. I'd argue he's the most talented player on the field on Friday night. Now, you might say Petrarca. Yeah, Petrarca's a better, more accomplished footballer, but no one has the weapons that this guy has. Now, he was inaccurate. Four shots at goal, but I think he can work harder, and I think he doesn't yet quite understand how good he can be, and I'm looking forward to him exploding on Friday night because I just think he's the one wild card for Melbourne, and if they're going to kick a big score, they need him to kick three or four. Did you notice someone significant who wasn't part of the finals on the weekend? You're going to tell us, I think, Sam. Ray Chamberlain didn't umpire. Mm. Not seen in the best 16 umpire. I spoke to the AFL just before we came on air. They said that because he can't bounce because of his bad back, he's not going to be considered for final selection. So how can he be considered for the home and away season? So he's, he's bouncing is OK for the home and away season, but when it comes to the finals... It's well, I don't, I don't think he's been, he's been bouncing as much and because they've got four umpires, but... He's, he's in the best 16 what would you adjudicators. Rather, Lord, oh, would you rather the best, the best, the best decision makers mm, yes. or the best bouncers? He doesn't have to bounce. Yeah, Obviously, right. they don't think he's good enough to umpire if they're not putting him in. Oh, I think he's had a bit of an injury-interrupted season. Give me well. the best decision makers over the best mm. bouncers. Someone else can bounce the ball. A, sounds like a pretty radical call to me.